Valsiade is, is uh, a very fascinating place because it because people are buried there for more than 1,000 years. In this episode, I'm visiting the Valsjärde grave mounds north of Uppsala. This was a place where the Vikings buried their top warriors and placed them in boats. The ritual would start in old Uppsala and the dead person would then be carried by a boat on the river Fyrisån to Valsjärde. There are historians who mean that Valsjärde could be the actual Valhalla. This is the world of Swedish history. This is World of Swedish History, and my name is Johan Romin, and I work as a journalist in Stockholm, Sweden. It's a little bit hard to find Valsjärde, the mystical grey mounds where the Vikings held their rituals more than 1000 years ago. It's out in the countryside north of the university city of Uppsala. During the Viking Age, Uppsala was a sacred place, and every nine years the Vikings made human sacrifice and had huge meetings at the Viking Great Hall. This is also the place where you can watch the royal grave mounts, still important landmarks. Back in that time the sea level was much higher, and it would be possible to sail a Viking ship all the way close to the grey mounds of Uppsala and Valsjärde. I met the historian Jon Ljungqvist at Uppsala University to talk to him about the findings in the graves and how come people were buried in boats. The graveyard, the name Valsjärde, yeah. what do you say? Val, it has two elements. Mm. <laughs> so Val is uh, the selected warriors. Selected that had, warriors that had, that has died, uh, preferably on the battlefield. Järde is a field, and the buried person, the, these these guys, uh, primarily guys, uh, buried in boats, very rich warrior burials on on a hill. It could be like th they are the selected ones, the val buried on this on a hill in a field. That's why why it's called Valsjärde. So, what was the connection to Valhalla, the Viking place where you came after death or stuff like that? Yeah, the, the Val, Valhalla means the uh, the hall of uh, of the Val. Valhalla is that's the private that's the private hall of Odin. There are different boat graves, as they called in Valsjärde. What's in those graves? Can you describe that? Valsjärde is is a, a very fascinating place because it because people are buried there for more than 1,000 years. And you have more than 100 graves, and 14 of them are what we call boat burials. And for at least from around 550 AD, 250 years before the Viking Age, until up to maybe 1100 AD, when they really start to turn Christian, um, warriors are buried in boats, and they're equipped with full weapon sets. So right next to the, the deceased person has been buried with swords, spears, uh, shields placed on top of the body. And in the first phase they also have helmets uh, with uh, very nice helmets and arrowheads, sometimes arrows both for hunting and for, for warfare. And besides that, they've been buried with a, a full kitchen equipment, a big gaming board with uh, gaming pieces made of whale bones ex uh, imported from uh, probably northern Norway, um, glass beakers, and especially in the early phase, before the Viking Age, they're buried with loads of animals. So, sort of free, could be up to three horses, three or four dogs, um, cows, pigs sheep, uh, fish, uh, wild birds that were caught in the, in the wetlands and birds of prey. And they uh, sacrificed these animals? Yeah, so, so it, is, it is a tradition. That, that's a special thing for middle Sweden. In, in this region people are buried with more animals than in other places in Scandinavia. So if, if you're a poor person you may be buried with a, a sheep or half a sheep and a dog. Um, but when we come up to these aristocratic burials, it could be more or less a complete ordinary stable that they slaughter and put in the grave. And so um, 
they, they are, they, these animals are part of the burial rituals. So together with the objects, they, they, they help to signal the status of the deceased person. So how many warriors are there buried? We have 14 in boat burials. What's a symbol uh, that uh, people were burned in, in the boats? Why boats? Why boats? That's, uh, that's one of the main questions, because uh, it is a thing that turns up in uh, around five, in the 500s AD. And, uh, and it can be traced in some way, it can be traced back to the, the migration period. Because in, in that period we see uh, a part of the population is, is rich persons are, are buried in chambers. And that in some way that transform into the boat burial ritual when we come into the Vendel period. I think it's a fashion thing because we see the same phenomenon in England at the same time. It's an extremely famous boat burial that is called Sutton Hoo. It is an aristocratic thing that becomes some kind of uh, European fashion uh, in this period. The Viking Age started with the attack on the monastery of Lindisfarne in Northumbria, England in 793. But the Scandinavian boat culture and the raiding tradition is much older than that. The time before the Viking Age is called the Vendel time here in Sweden. And some years back a boat grave from that time was found in Estonia. And in that grave archaeologists could find warriors from the area that is now Sweden. That's a tricky thing because we've, so until 10 years ago we, only, we had no archaeological evidence of raiding. But then, they, uh, then the Estonian archaeologists went to an island called uh, Ösel or Sarma in, the, in the local language uh, that lies um, just outside west of the Estonian coast. And on the beach there they found two ships, like the sh two ship burials actually. In one of them seven persons were buried, in another one 34 persons. And they were warrior burials. And the burial rituals is in many ways uh, similar to what we find in Valsjärde. But they are mass burials, so you, you can't really... S so they are using its, its um, situation adapted uh, boat burials. Because it seems like they are part of a raiding party or a, a small army. And for some reasons some of them have died. And the research on that is ongoing right now. It's a, parallel, it's a project that we support from our big project. And it seems some of them have been killed or damaged or died of their wounds because we have uh, arrowheads lodged in the bones and cut marks. So they, they, they've gone from probably from middle Sweden over to Estonia and made a raid on this island. And it seems there has been a battle. A couple of them has died. And They've, they've buried them, but we think, but they've not been in a hurry. So they are sitting on a sand shore, sandy shore far away from home, but they still have plenty of time to bury them, the warriors. And they, in the big boat burials where we have 34 warriors, they, they are buried in four different layers placed on top of each other. And more or less each warrior is buried with his sword and belt. Uh, with him and, and shields placed over the bodies. And these people, where, where did they come from? They think they came from somewhere from Middle Sweden. And this takes place around 750 AD. That means 50 years before the real Viking Age. If you compare the Vikings to other people in that time and their brutality, but was that something that was normal going on that, at that time? Or was the Vikings really more brutal than other? I, I think that, that in some situations when, when Vikings were raiding and so on, they, they, they perhaps they were more brutal than, than, other, than other people at the time because uh, uh, brutalism can be a strategy in order to gain success. It's good if your opponent is, is afraid of you because then you, you can more easily conquer the territory. Mm. That's uh, like the Islamic State did. They? That's <laughs> like the Islamic State and mm. that's what we see in, in war after war. It's, it's what, what we saw in former Yugoslavia in the 1990s. Mm. 
tell me about this new project that you are uh, involved in. Yeah, I'm, I'm involved in, in this 10-year project where uh, it's called the Viking Phenomenon. It's based upon understanding the beginning of the Viking Age and what happens in the centuries before that, especially the 8th century, 100 years before the, the plundering of Lindisfarne begins and the big Scandinavian trade with the, with the East, with the Arabs, and Byzantium starts. It's either focused upon why, for example, Viking raiding, why, when did it begin, what was the infrastructure behind it, how was it organized. So, so what is the most uh, fascinating thing about uh, the Viking Age, according to you? Oh, the, yeah, that's classic. <laughs> uh, uh, or not classic, tricky question, because I, I, think, I think what we are discovering is that we are, we are constantly underestimating them. Uh, and we, I think especially we are underestimating what they were capable of before the Viking Age. Because we, we tend to create some kind of historical narrative that um, that we, when an era begins like the Viking Age, they, people discover loads of things because they come in contact with Europeans and so on. And they do because you have Christianity and they, with the, the more people travel, the more influences you get from other cultures and you get new ideas and so on. But we have, we've had a tendency to underestimate what happened the organization of trade and contacts and so on before the Viking Age. And that, that, that I think is very fascinating because we, we're discovering new things all the time in, in trade and so on. Mm. Um, so there is definitely uh, a lot of things happening before the, the, the classic Viking Age begins. And the last question now, like five years from now when you're through with this work here, uh, what do you know about the Vikings that you don't know mm. today? Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's very important to say that there are hundreds and hundreds of scholars doing research on the Vikings, so you, can't really, you cannot transform the story entirely. But we, we are doing a lot of research on what happens before the Viking Age, in the century before that. And what we call the 8th century, 700 to 800 AD, that, that's a century that we haven't done that much of research on. Because Vikings are, that's where the focus has been. So, so I, I think we, if we can combine different variables and, and different stories, stories and combine them in, into one a common context, for all of them, I think we have we have a good package of being able to describe what what happens in the, in the century before the Viking Age. If you're traveling to Sweden, please visit Old Uppsala and Valsjärde. They have a museum at Old Uppsala, and of course, it's really interesting to see the giant royal mounds. Next week is about the murder of Olaf Palme in 1986. Soon, it's exactly 30 years ago, the trial against Christer Pettersson was held at the District Court of Stockholm. In 1998, when the police tried to get a retrial against Christer Pettersson, I was the assigned reporter to this case at the Swedish television. And Christer Pettersson watched me when he got the news that there would be no new trial. Next week, I will also present my thoughts on the big question, who killed Olof Palme? Make sure to listen, and listen also to the other episodes of World of Swedish History. Oh, I almost forgot the question from the trailer for this episode. How come the grounds at Valsjärde has a wavy form? It is because the wood in the boats has rotted away during the more than 1000 years that has passed since the funeral ritual. And with the wood gone, the earth surrounding the boat has fallen down. At the Facebook page World of Swedish History, you can see a video with a model of Valsjärde. Please join and see you next week. That is all for now. Bye.